Hey, what's up, worship leaders, pastors, and friends? Thanks so much for coming back to Worship Team Training Podcast. This is our video podcast where we're going to be featuring musicians, singers, worship leaders, and great friends, great artists, just like right here. Steve McWhorter, that's sitting in the hot seat. It's so great to have him. Before we get to him, we want to get to you to let you know what's going down with these videos that we're going to be doing weekly featuring different guests. And we're so glad that you're here today. We're going to be talking about guitar playing. We're going to be talking about... Uh, what are the three struggles that guitar players struggle with the most? And uh, Stephen McWhorter, you've seen him before, heard him before in our podcast. Great dude, been friends for a few years now, and so great to have him back. Stephen, how are you today, bro? Good, man. How are you? Good, man. It's so great to see you again. Yeah. I love the new color of your um, your cap. It's great this time. Yeah, it's great. Um, we- um, you gotta have when you're bald, you gotta have a large selection of hats. <laughs> Did we call you Stephen the Gray? That, there you go. I like it. All right, guys, check out Stephen McWhorter, his new album, Highest Praise, that you can find on Apple Music, Spotify, everywhere else that you get your downloadable music. And also uh, check out his website that we're going to be featuring in the show links right here. And we'll talk more about that soon. So, Stephen, um, you and I were talking before about this whole topic. So what... What are the three greatest struggles you see in guitar players and the worship team? Well, people's opinions on that would vary. Um, all right. I can do is speak. All I can do is speak to the things that I've had to learn um, not to do. Uh, and as a worship leader, and I've been doing this a very long time. I think early on as a guitar player, you know, uh, the biggest thing was probably. Uh, if I was going to be awesome, honest, was really working on rhythm and timing. Uh, acoustic guitar kind of lays almost in, even though it's a guitar, it almost lays in a percussion, percussive world. And if the guitar is like off on timing, it's like a shaker almost that's, that's like <laughs> out, of, out of phase. So really, you know, being good at like, uh, you know, timing and, and paying attention to your rhythm and those things are really important and one of the ways you can get really good at that is playing to a metronome or a click um there's a lot out there a lot of them you can go to the app store and buy one for your phone and just you know uh play along with one you know find the bpms the beat per minutes for maybe the worship songs you're working on most of today's stuff you're playing a lot of bands you're playing to tracks so rhythm is going to be more important uh than 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 ever it's really playing along with that click track and learning how to do that well without uh, really pushing um, and slowing down or dragging. Can you give us an example of good timing? Yeah, uh, good timing. Well, <laughs> it's perfect good timing. Come on. Timing. Uh, yeah. You know, whether or not, you know, I, I, one of the things I use a lot is called, um, it's called tempo. And yeah. back in the day, we used to use it a lot. Now I, I spend a lot of time in the studios. I spend a lot of time listening to click tracks. So it's kind of like beat into my head, like not to get off the grid. But um, one I use is called Tempo. And it looks like this. And you can see the dots here for the timing of like a 4-4. And you can pick your time signature and stuff. And we'll just do a basic, you know, 120 BPMs right here. You can click it in or whatever. and it, sounds like this right and one of the things you would want to do is i don't know if you can hear this yep but if, you know you can kind of hear that and the idea would be to stay with this as you're playing and and in a rehearse in a practice like this when you're doing this it's not about being fancy it's about playing like a simple chord and uh, really just trying to stay locked into that click. And the more you do that, the more natural it will come. Hmm. What, what's your theory about how people can best stick with a click? Um, again, it's rehearsing. Uh, I would get an app like this. I would do it as much as possible. Uh, the other thing is going to be your mix. A lot of people have in-ears if you're dealing with a click. Um, and you're playing with tracks and it's really making sure you can hear the click and often with your in-ears rhythmically playing along with the click, 
Yeah. So I would say the, the real, my, my real theory on that would be, you know, a lot of people are playing with in-ears and they're playing with tracks a lot with bands today. And that's a whole different discussion. But if you are really learning how to operate your mix and get what you want well, and one of the things isn't just so much like the music's really loud and then you turn the click up as loud as possible because then it's going to bleed through your mic or whatever's going on around you. I would really turn other things down in your mix so you can hear the click well and be able to lock in with it. And, you know, if you're the worship leader, that's what you want. If you're not the worship leader and you're playing acoustic, then you're going to hear the worship leader, hear the drums well, and hear that click. Perfect. All right. Number two, what's the second struggle? Yeah, I think probably the second struggle would be, uh, and it comes with some of that, I would say it's overplaying. Uh, you know, you got a lot of people and it's not overplaying isn't always like I'm playing a lot of fancy, like, you know, uh, like guitar licks or, you know, it's not that you're playing a lot of fancy guitar licks. A lot of time you're overplaying just by playing too hard. Like you get excited, you're playing live and, and you're playing really loud and you're just like aggressive. And uh, a lot of times that's not gonna set really well in a mix. It's like, you know, I could play really, really, really hard, which I used to do. And I would listen back to tracks or live recordings and I'd be like, oh my gosh, it's like, <laughs> I'm so rough. I just wanna turn it down, but yeah. it's like covering everything. And I was breaking strings all the time. It was crazy, but, uh, so really it was probably, you know, finding for me that like, like just finding the way where, you know, if you listen to your favorite, like guitar, like acoustic guitar tracks, it's usually not really hard. It's like a softer and it's like strummed more and it sounds really pretty. And there's this place when you're listening to your guitar where you can hear, oh, sonically, it's like reverberating well and it sounds good as opposed to, you know, me like cranking at it like that. And so it's really finding that happy place. And even with that, it's it's really keeping it simple with the chords even, not, not feeling like you have to play every little nuance. You know, you typically are gonna have a piano player in a worship setting, typically, I know not always, you might be a solo acoustic guitar player. And even then simple goes a long way because you wanna be able to sing, you wanna be able to focus more on being able to lead people in worship. But if you do have a piano player, they're gonna be filling a lot of that those little nuances and if you're overplaying it can get kind of muddy sounding and uh this is more for you know the worship setting of course so i think really just playing simple and, and some of that is going to be again maybe finding the right pick one that's not you know where you're playing a little softer uh also getting your acoustic in your mix where you can hear it well so that you're not um overly playing just to hear yourself like you feel like you got to play louder so you play harder and mm -hmm. that was a big deal for me. If I got my acoustic at a volume where it was loud -esque, loud esque to me, I would play at a more moderate volume and not play as hard. And when you start playing really hard because you can't hear, you also get off that click, which brings us back to the first point. So. Good point. Good point. Um, I, I confess, um, I lead worship with a herny gurney and I need to stop ever playing. Plain and simple. <laughs> uh, Sorry, yeah, I joined the club. Number three, what is it? The third biggest struggle uh, that you see. Number, yeah, I would say is communicating with the other players, like learning to pay attention to other people besides yourself and what they're doing. Um, I, you know, I, I think this kind of comes back to more to being an acoustic guitar player who is a worship leader. And in the worship world, I think for the most part, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with people that are leading worship and playing acoustic guitar. That's a very typical thing. And for that, it's being able to communicate with, I think primarily your piano player um, with transitioning. Uh, if you're an acoustic guitar player, sometimes it's hard to transition the band unless you're giving them cues like, okay, here's the song. But um, there's those transitions where the Holy Spirit is kind of moving and you wanna create space and you wanna allow him to do something. But the band is kind of maybe like, okay, now it's time for the next song. And you're yeah. just rushing into the song. If you're the piano player, which I play piano a lot, it's a lot easier to control those, those moments, right? Uh, as a guitar player, it's a little trickier. So you really have to be 
visually and like in sync with your piano player, like really paying attention to them. Uh, a lot of the times we'll put the piano players like in the back or something like that, but then it's hard to communicate with them visually for those moments, unless you've really kind of worked them out in advance. A lot of people do that. They, they, they prepare and that's good. Uh, I think sometimes it's the hardest part is the communicating in the moments that are, we're not prepared. There may be more spontaneous and that's going to really demand that you can visually uh, communicate with them or you have some way of talking to them where not everybody else can hear. <laughs> so some people sometimes have these like these uh, mics that are extra vocal mics where they click it, they stomp on the pedal and it mutes their mic and now mm -hmm. only the band hears them, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of stuff. That's a technically advanced way of handling it. The, the more typical one is just kind of keep them in your line of sight so you guys can communicate with where you're going and what you're doing. And yeah. all these connect with the tempo uh, and you playing, not overly playing. If you're playing simple and you're picking maybe keys even, um, I do this a lot. I'm not saying everybody should do this, but I'll try to pick keys that don't drastically jump from each other. If I can get a lot of songs in the same key, then that's going to make that transition stuff a lot easier. But if I'm going, okay, we're playing a G and now the next song we're playing an E, you're going to have to kind of really be able to communicate with your piano player or whoever is, you know, pads and atmosphere kind of controlling yeah. that. Uh, so like, what's your best recommendation for worship leaders who may struggle with other people in your team that have rhythm difficulties, technique issues, communication, uh, they're not looking, they're not feeling you. What's the best thing that you recommend for these worship leaders to handle those kind of uh, difficulties in their team? Yeah, um, grace uh, <laughs> is going to be the number one thing. You know, you have a lot of churches that yeah. uh, kind of are just dealing with the people that are there. You you have who you have, and, and, and that's that's what it is. And it's more about really learning to worship him more than anything um, and not getting too bogged down in the technical stuff at that place. Hmm. Um, and allowing people to make mistakes without letting yourself as a worship leader and a kitchen guitar player getting, um, getting sidetracked yourself from being able to worship because somebody maybe didn't do something the way you rehearsed or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to have grace if you're in that place, if you're in a level that's like, hey, we, we have who we have. This is who the Lord's brought us. We're just going to make this work. Uh, the grace thing's going to be important. And then the helping them. Um, you know, I think it's going to be stuff like your podcast. It's going to be stuff like this. It's going to be um, giving them some of the tools we talked about, such yeah. as learning how to mix your in-ears better, how to play along with a click. Um, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing is going to be spending as much time just worshiping together, playing together, not only preparing for Sunday, but just getting together and worshiping together. Yeah. Um, out of that place, you'll really start to lock in and get to know each other. Awesome. So for people who don't know you, what's your story? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I've just been doing this a long time. Uh, was a pat evangelist son, became a drug addict uh, throughout a long period of my time. I was crystal meth addict, all that. Had a radical encounter mm -hmm. in my late teens with the Holy Spirit. Gave my life to Jesus. Uh, went from addiction to redemption, meth addict to worship leader. Um, and I've been doing this thing for over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was the, the, the primary lead vocal for uh, a band called Iron Bell Music for, for many years and have been um, for a, several many other years. I was a staff worship writer with Sony Music. And uh, so I've been doing this for a long time, leading worship. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in those three hour worship sessions with a piano or acoustic <laughs> with people praying and doing stuff. So I've really, I'd say cut my teeth uh, in that way. And uh, I like to say the thing I I want people to understand the most is not just about me, but as worship leaders that maybe engage with me and go, oh, that seems really genuine and it's great. You know, um, you want to make sure that who you are, who people see on a stage is uh, who you are in the secret place. So the more time you spend at home just worshiping the Lord when nobody's watching, that's going to be the thing that's going to make you um, 
it's going to be like the overflow. Like people see you on Sunday morning and they're going to be like, man, this person has been with Jesus. And that's the stuff that really shapes who we are as musicians um, and as worship leaders. Awesome. Thanks for that, man. And uh, where can people find your music, your new album that's out? Yeah, Highest Praise uh, is out now. It just got nominated for Worship Album of the Year with, uh, you know, NRT, new release today. Congratulations. I'm uh, super excited. It's very different. We yeah. went for something different, but I've been doing this with a friend of mine who's in gospel music, Jason Claiborne, and him and I just kind of locked arms. We said, hey, let's, let's see what the bride looks like when we come together. That's and so cool. It's been a lot of fun. And we tour, we play a lot with like an all black choir and it's unbelievable. It's like being strapped to a Holy Spirit Mack truck. But, uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> and, awesome. You know, yeah, you can find out more about us with the link that you're going to post. That'll get you everywhere. Um, but if you look up Steve McWhorter, um, you know, wherever music is streamed and stuff, you're going to find us. But also you can go to uh, on top of the link that you sent, which is like a link tree, like, you know, all landing page of links. Uh, for like, you know, Spotify and all that. Uh, you can also go to SMJC, as in Stephen McCorder, Jason Claiborne, smjcmusic.com, and that's our website. You can also find a lot of stuff there. Awesome. We'll post those links so folks that you can get the album and check out, learn more about Stephen and Jason, what they're doing, how God is just messing up stuff in their lives and, and bring that reality to churches and people outside the church who really need to hear that message. So uh, I'm so grateful, man, that we're buddies. And it's, it's so great to have you, Stephen, on today. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, dude. All right. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for, uh, so much for joining us today on the Worship Team Training video podcast. Check us out next week. We got more guests coming. Can't wait to unveil next because you never know who will be revealing their next top three struggles to help you and your worship team in your ministry. Love you. See you guys back soon next time. Bye.